Hi, my name's John. Welcome to another Sunday Night Nightcap. In the first part of tonight's nightcap is all those brass bushes, the brass half bearings that Scott machined. Um, I take them apart and do my little bit of milling work on them. I've really enjoyed making these. Uh, Scott enjoyed the machine inside he did. It's nice to make something or repair something that you know for a fact is going to last a long time. Uh, it is a, it's a pleasure to work on something like that really. In part two, I do a little bit of plasma cutting. I cut out some llamas for one of the lads on the forum. Of alpacas, like big hairy, hairy woolly things. Um, I do a little bit of machine on the lathe. I make a, I start making a part for a friend for a wood turning lathe. And I do a general review of my shop because it's getting to the stage now where I need to have a re serious reorganisation. Um, you can't basically can't get moving here anymore. It's getting to the point where it's not pleasant to be here anymore, and that's not what it's all about. So I've just got to make better use of what space I've got. If you haven't sent a name in for the double boost monthly draw, as well worth doing. All you've got to do is send me an email containing your name, like your full name, John Mills, not just John. That's my email address up there. The name goes into this bucket. If it's drawn out, you win a good prize once every month. Right now we're ready for the good bit, I'm going to heat the bearing up, take it off and uh, I'm going to do some mill work on it. We'll get some serious heat into here and soon get the bits. The final job on these is to put in that oil hole as well as that oil groove there. There's also a mill piece there. Quite sure what's been going on there, but we'll just replicate it. I've brought this onto the table and I've set it level with the back of the table. Then we'll take all our measurements off the back of the table to get the centre. And then obviously off one end to get the centre of that row.
That's a piece of silver steel in the drill chuck. The bar wind is in till it just touches. I'll hear it touch. That's it there. Right, so that's 14 mil diameter. So if I move the table in 7 mil, that's going to put the centre of the machine right on the edge. Right, so that's the axis of that machine is now right on the edge of the port. The width of the bearing is 6 inches, and it's 6.6 .6 from that edge to that edge, and that's the edge that we're zeroed on, so I need to go with 3.3 .3 inches that way, that'll put it right in the centre. It's going to remeasure it. just the inches zero three point three inches three point one two Three point one two three. So now we should be right, bang in the centre. It certainly appears to be. Right, then we need three inches from that edge. So quite simply. Use a ruler, that's three inches there. It's not super critical, it's just a, an oil hole as long as it's in the right the right place, which is there. So basically I can now lock the table off and I can start drilling holes in the lovely new bearings. it's in the Probably end up with a half inch milling cutter in here to put this hole in. It's actually a three quarter inch hole, not a half inch hole. Three quarter inch oil hole. Five years.
dreaded bell end AR40 spanner that actually needs to use. I've got a ball end, building cut how to put the slot in there. I don't know how well it'll, it'll work, it's a home made one. I didn't make it, it was just some tooling I got given or bought. Right, so I need to measure how long that is from the centre because I still sent that there. It's 1.4 from the centre to the end of the slot. This looks quite nice. Half a finger, that's about the same depth as the other one. I'd probably put a die grinder in there and just flash that little edge off just to make sure it's got a nice. You need to make sure it's lying square or at least lying level. So we'll go. Right, that's pretty good. Put a straight edge or a square under there, none under there. That's good. It's you can make set up as easy as you want to. Um, or more of them always put an old groove in there. So as long as it looks straight, in this case it will be straight. You could put a clock cage on, run a clock along that edge, but for what it's got to do, just keep it simple. Clamp it down, check it again and then get a ball end cutter and put it through and put an aluminium packer into there just so we don't damage the bearing face If I had a million 19 wheel spanners, I'd still lost the bastard. Right, Johnny. Lovely. Slightly smaller ball in, cut out to put the, the grooves into there with. When you look at the oil groove on here, it's actually chuck solid with hard oil shite. So I think I'll make the groove a little bit wider than they've, they've done theirs. So basically, the oil hasn't been getting along here properly. You could put various oil grooves in but that's the way they did it a hundred years ago and the bearings basically ran for a hundred years so they must have known a little bit but I think a slightly smaller ball end tool but slightly bigger than what they have they have done that's probably been put in by hand with a probably a chisel 
one thing I saw the guy that put the groove in is not here now. This is the piece he parted off, that's where he's had it held in the choke. And we're wondering how strong that actual soft sole that joint is there, so we can do a little bit of a, a test on it, being as what we've got is a bit now. That's, that's just soft sole, and I, I thought that would have broke off. Do a kinetic test on it now. I have got a, a bigger hammer just in case. Right, that surprised me. Really surprises. You can see the solar joint there. That one's possibly starting to give. Right, so it did, it did give in. But you can see the sole has actually broke. It hasn't, it hasn't come away from the bronze. Very impressed. I'm sure Scott would be relieved to see that actually how, how strong that was. <laughs> 